For the first time in 12 years, France won the Six Nations in March 2022, beating the other five teams, giving them a grand slam. One year before the World Cup, held on their own territory. To win, France changed its tactics by using the kick at a count of around 30 times per match. That's more than the average and twice as many as in 2016. So why the change in strategy? Does it mean rugby is now won through kicking? Rugby is above all a game about gaining ground. Teams bring the ball forward metre by metre and ideally try to ground the ball into the opposition's in-goal area. There are basically three ways of achieving this. First, by carrying the ball and running. But sometimes, it doesn't quite work. The second option is to make a pass. But when passing by hand, it has to be backwards. The only way to send a ball forward is to kick it with your foot. Rugby revolves around these three methods. Teams sometimes prefer to focus on just one technique. For a long time, it was the kick. Contrary to popular belief, rugby was first and foremost a kicking game, rugby football. That was the first form of the game. Bonjour mesdames, bonjour mesdemoiselles, bonjour messieurs. Nous vous accueillons dans l'Amps Park de Cardiff. Let's go back to 1968. France faced Wales on the final day of the Five Nations tournament. Paris John, qui vote un peu court. Each team kicked more than 50 times. And for good reason. In that match, when France kicked the ball out, the ball would be put back into play by the Welsh at the point where it left the field. France, of course, lost the ball, but they could recover it once it was put back into play. They could gain precious metres without too much effort. It was a technique that led France to win their first Grand Slam. But the tactic irritated spectators. A few years earlier, after another match with more than 100 kicks, commentators went into a frenzy. They accused the players of undermining the honour of rugby and called for a change in the rules. Faced with a game that was becoming less and less spectacular, since it consisted of a series of static phases, the rule was introduced where, in order to gain ground, a kicked ball had to rebound in the field before going out of bounds. From 1968, this kick would be put back into play at the level of the field from where it happened which means the team that kicked the ball wouldn't gain any ground. To play the touch where the ball leaves the field, it has to first bounce within the boundaries of the field. And because of the ball's oval shape, doing this is far from easy. In the years that followed, the rules increasingly discouraged these long kicks. As a tactic, the kick lost some of its appeal. And within a few decades, the strategy was totally reversed. The number of passes and carries, considered more spectacular, increased threefold. Meanwhile, kicks halved in frequency. But this change of strategy had a side effect. After the rule change, defence lines became harder to cross. And here's why. Before 1968, teams had to cover the back of the field to recover the ball. But without this threat, coaches began using these players to bolster their defence. The defences are getting tighter and tighter. We are now seeing defences with 14 players on the line, or even 15. Players also became increasingly athletic. Since 1995, rugby has been a professional sport. With more time to train, Players became stronger and more mobile. Strategies were refined and spaces got smaller. Year after year, the number of tries plummeted. Faced with these increasingly impenetrable defences, teams began developing new strategies. The kick began to play a central role. The kicking game is a double-edged weapon because defensively it makes you less likely to concede and defensively, it is creating territorial gains for you to exploit. Bill Jarrod is a sports data analyst and fervent advocate of the kick. 
when you put it that simply, the question is why would any team not use the kicking game? In 2017, he worked for the South African team. His goal was to find the weakness in the French team. It was the year France played uh, South Africa four times, and the key weakness in the French team at that point was that they played a lot of ball-in-hand rugby in their own half. That was the, the key weakness, tactically, that South Africa exploited against France. At the time, France didn't kick often, but South Africa used it to keep the French in their own half. As expected, France preferred to keep possession of the ball and go up by hand. A risky play where the slightest mistake is costly. That year, France lost all four of their matches against South Africa. France paid for their lack of kicking and then reinvented themselves. 2020 time for a new coach and a new game plan. Their number of kicks doubled and the number of passes almost halved. France tried out new combinations and actively worked on their kicks. The results were immediate. The versatile players were able to use the best of the three techniques depending on the situation. After 12 years, France finally won a Six Nations Championship. They topped the world ranking for the first time and were unbeaten for 14 matches in a row. But their kicking was not universally acclaimed. Other teams also used the technique, resulting in this kind of game. The two teams passed the ball back and forth, waiting for a foul. Not a great game for the audience. In the press, journalists worried, as they did in the 1960s, denouncing a lack of spectacle and even announcing the death of rugby. And like in the 1960s, the rules changed again. In 2021, the Federation introduced the 50-22 kick, a ball shot in the attacker's own half that then bounces inside the opposition's 22 meters before bouncing into touch, means the attacking team gets to throw at the resultant lineout, a prime attacking position. Coaches were forced to rethink the way they covered the pitch and weakened defenses. The law encouraging kicking actually led to more playing by hand. They're trying to change the rules to find the right mix between kicking and hand play. It hasn't had much effect yet, but I think it's coming. Step by step, I think there will be a mix between the two and everyone will be happy. The use of the kick is almost cyclical. France may have used it a lot in 2022, but it was less than the 2009 average and significantly less than France's kicks in 2006. There's no magic recipe. Each strategy ends up being countered and the best way to win is to master all three methods of play. You have to have all options available. I mean, carry, pass and kick and everyone's trying to give the information for the best option. And then it's a question of whether a coach wants to have minimum risk, take some risk, or have a lot of risk. Um, and that's just a question of philosophy. 